Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Tyler Potts, aka the JavaScript Wizard, and in today's video we're going to be creating this very simple uh, JavaScript Wizard page switcher. So normally the um, standard way of switching pages is to make different links and you obviously switch over to them. But that's kind of slow, especially when you've got a lot of content on a page. So in this video we're going to be creating basically a one-page, multi-page application using JavaScript. Boom, blow, mind blown. And as you can see on screen here, we have this basic page one and if we click on the about page it takes you to the about page uh, services page and contact us page and it's so fast as you see nothing reloads the page does not reload and that is the key component of this um kind of how like a javascript or react router works or view router or anything like that it's a similar thing but we're going to be building our own today so without further ado guys let's get started Okay guys, so I have started a new folder with a JS page switcher, opened it up in VS Code and just added three blank files, so index.html, main.css and main.js. So the first one we're going to be in is obviously index.html. So inside of our index.html file, we're going to do exclamation mark and we're going to hit tab. Now this is going to give us a very basic boilerplate for a uh, website. And as you can see here, we've just got a simple title. We're just going to say page switcher, 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 page switcher, switcher. It would have been more dramatic if I actually got it right to start with and I didn't accidentally highlight everything. But we won't talk about that. It's just, you know, this stuff. Uh, we're going to then link up our main CSS. So we'll just say main CSS. We're then going to say main dot, well, uh, sorry, we're going to say script source, and then in the source, we're going to say main.js. So that's going to hook up our JavaScript. Now, what we want to do is actually start with the markup, and we're going to have a few components here. We're going to have the header component. We're going to have the nav component. We're then going to have a h1 inside that, which says JavaScript wizard. Feel free to add whatever you want inside of that part. We're going to say ul.tabs, and inside those, we're going to have an li with a dot tab and we're going to have five of those, four of those, not five, with a A inside. Bam, as you can see here. Now we're going to get rid of the anchor tag. So I'm just going to quickly highlight every single one here and we're going to edit them all at once. So let's break them all onto new lines. Bam. And then inside the anchor tag, we're going to add a data attribute. Now data attributes are Java, uh, <laughs> HTML's way of adding dynamic data and stuff like that. Things you can grab inside of JavaScript, inside of uh, CSS and stuff like that. So we're gonna say data switcher. Now we could have gave this a class of data switcher and that would have been just as easy. But I like to be weird and do weird things with JavaScript. So that's what we're doing today. And then in here, we'll just say home, there we go. So now let's actually edit this to say the right thing. So we're gonna say number two, number three, and number four. So these data tabs here, we're going to get this in JavaScript. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this number, this page ID, and we're going to basically activate the page we want every single time we click on one of these links. So we get the actual number. So you'll figure that out in one second. Oh, whoops. We then got the about page. We've thirdly got the services page. And finally, we've got the contact page. So we've got all our four pages. And in the first tab, we're going to say is active. And in is active, what we're going to do, uh, basically this means this is the page we're currently on. And obviously we're going to be on the home page when you first load up this application. Um, we can do some uh, stuff later on, which makes it so you can choose which page you start on, which is fine. So the next bit is going to be a main. Now inside the main, we're going to have a section of class pages. And inside there, we're going to have four pages. That <laughs> I nailed that. Four pages. And once again, I'm just going to highlight all of these so we can edit them all at once. We're going to have a H1 inside, or sorry, a H2 inside all of these. We're going to, we already got a H1 on our page. And we're just going to say page 1. And then up on the page, we're going to say data page is equal to 1. Obviously, these numbers will correspond to the data tabs. So let's just go down here and say P. And we're going to say welcome to the, and we're going to say home page. And then we're going to edit these individually. So here, we're going to say 2. And this is the about page we're then going to say free and this is the surfaces page and we're going to say four and this is going to be the contact page there we go so we've got our four different pages awesome 
So this is the markup essentially done. Now, if we go over here and obviously we need to actually, if we refresh, this is going to be off because I turned the surfer off. So we need to go back here to our JS page and I'm going to use something called HTTP surfer. And I'm just going to hit enter. Now, this is a node module. To install this, we're going to go to a new tab and you need NPM installed. I'm not going to explain how you do that. I'm just going to hit NPM I dash G and then we give in HTTP surfer and that will install that globally to your node modules so you're able to run the command i just ran now if we go back in refresh refresh without the css please and there you go so you can see this page is extremely generic and also i've noticed we've named them all page one let's go in here and update these to be the relevant ones so that's page two page three and page four go back and here you go so this is great this looks amazing and we all know this is a page worthy of being published but we can take it one step further so we obviously need to hide the additional pages now to do that we're going to go into uh, main.css and we're going to just highlight everything we're going to say margin zero padding zero box sizing border box and a font family of your choice. Mine is sans, fire, fire sans, <laughs> wrong way around. And then sans serif, just in case you know. Save, go back, refresh, and there you go. So it's looking a little bit better. It's a bit more compact now, which isn't great, but it's looking a bit better. So that's cool. So we're styling up the starter. Let's then add in some body color. So we're going to actually give this a body of a background color. And we'll just say EEE. -E -E. I don't like having a white background. I think it's kind of boring. And then in our header, we're going to have a background color. And we're just going to make this white. We're going to have a box shadow. And it's going to be 0 pixels, 3 pixels, 6 pixels, RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.1. Bam. So now we should have a nicer looking header. Not as great, but you can differentiate from the header and the body. So if we go back and we go down to header nav. And I say display flex. You can see now they're next to each other. They look a bit weird. Let's give this a bit more stuff. So we're going to say justify content space between and align items center because we want it to all be center. As you can see, now they're on the opposite sides. That doesn't look too great. Let's give it a padding left of 142 and a padding right of 142 pixels as well. So let's just go push it more into the middle. Um, obviously, if you're making a responsive, you want to maybe have a framework, you want bootstrap, for example, you add a container, a row, columns, and then you would do all this. So you've got the actual padding and I think works right. In our tutorial, we don't need that. You can style this up however you want. So I'm just going to use some generic styles there. I'm then going to get the header. I'm going to get the nav and I'm going to get the H1. I'm going to give it a font size if I can spell, of 28 pixels. It doesn't need to be that big. It's in the header. It's basically like a logo. You could swap it out for a logo if you want. And a font weight of that. There you go. So it's looking a bit better. It's getting there. And let's go header nav.tabs.tab .tab and display that as a block. There you go. So that's lost its side bit there. Um, but we actually need to go to, I should have probably went here and said header nav dot tabs first and the first thing we want to do is list style type none we don't want it to be a list we're not actually classing it as a list it's going to be a it's a list but it's not the list type of list you want for list i know i nailed that but that's fine we'll display as flex and then we're going to justify the content to flex end so obviously this tabs if this was take up the whole space we just want it to be at the right side of the page so that's why we're flexing it to the end uh, which is all good that's good and now we actually need to style our, our actual tabs here. Because come on, they look kind of trash, don't they? Uh, so first thing we're going to do is obviously we have our header. We have our nab. Nab. <laughs> nafs. We have our tabs. And we have a tab. But then we have a A with a data switcher attribute. Now, as you can see here, you can actually grab. If I highlight this, it should show you why it should. It does. It grabs inside the header, nav, element, element. And then it gets an anchor tag with a data switcher attribute which is perfect. You can even give these values. You can see if it's equal to true. And then if we highlight this, you can see the markup here would be data switcher equal to true. So it only get things which are true. In this case, we just want anything with the class of data switcher inside of tabs, tabs, you know, you get the rest. Um, and we'll display these as block because obviously they're display inline to start with. We're going to add a padding of 15 pixels and 30 pixels because, you know, we want some space and we want them to look blocky. Uh, we're going to have a text decoration of none. Uh, we don't want an underline. Color of FFFF. 
um, a background colour of royal blue. Yes, royal blue. Not standard. No one wants that standard blue. We all here for the wild, wild, the wild, the wild royal blue. And then a cursor of point. Because we took away the href, we don't actually have a href on our anchor tags. Uh, we need to add a cursor or a pointer out. It doesn't know what it's doing. Bam. So we've got these sweet looking anchors. Now we need to style this. So which one is active? So let's highlight this. Bring it down here and say dot is active. And the one which is active is going to have a background color of an orangey yellow. Uh, F7A800 is a good one. And we're also going to give it a font way of like 700. And then we need to do the exact same thing one more time but this time it's going to be a hover state so when you hover over it we're just going to have the background change uh to the f7a800 and as you can see there you go it's now all styled up so that header's looking pretty cool obviously you want to style this however you style it that's totally up to you this is just my preference um of doing a quick sort of style obviously if i was doing a bigger style I'd, yeah yeah we won't go into that we won't go into that let's carry on so we've got the a data switcher we now need to style that main so we have this main tag around here uh this html5 market by the way section main and header or html5 elements um and this main we need to add padding to it so padding left we'll do 142 pixels we'll do padding right at 142 pixels right so we're going to center our content we're then going to go to main and then, or we're just going to do dot pages. And we're going to give margin top off like 100 pixels because we don't want it to be touching the top exactly. There you go. So it's spaced down slightly away from the top. Gives that nice uh, floaty feel to this once we actually add in some of the extra styles. So we've got that margin top 100. We're going to have a padding of 50 pixels top and bottom, 30 pixels left and right. A border radius. Now this is where it gets fancy. You can see here border radiuses are fancy as hell white and then a box shadow box shadows just oh that's box sizing that's not what i want come on uh and a box shadow and in here we'll just go to zero pixels three pixels six pixels rgba that one please bam so box shadows just add that little finesse to it. it's like oh look this box is floating off the page it looks like it's not even sat on this it's like it's like hovering man it looks cool i like it i'm just very nerdy uh pages dot page and we'll just go to display none Ah, they're all gone. That's sad. Sad times. But we're just going to say dot pages dot page dot e is active. And we're just going to display block. Oh, block. Block. Bam. Bam. Excuse me. Oh. So, yeah, we have no page active, but because we need to match this up. So, you see, we've got data tab one as active. We need to make sure data page one is active to start with. Else, you're going to have some errors. But bam. There we go. We've got data page one. Data page. Page one. Welcome to the home page. Boom, so that's the first bit. Now, we need to do some JavaScript. Now, this is the bit you've all been waiting for, I know, and it's been a long time. CSS takes time, you know, but we've got this data page. Looking cool, it looks amazing. Let's go into the JavaScript. So, inside of JS, we're just going to get a window.low onload event, and we're going to use an arrow function. We're not supporting IE, you know, I'm not an IE person. If you want to support IE, Go for it. Just remove, just turn that into a function and not an arrow function. But yeah, we're here. So an arrow function is ES6 syntax. Um, and it just, it's just cool. It's just better. So what we're doing here is we're going to grab all of our tab switcher. So what we're going to do is say data. Sw that's not how you spell switcher. Switcher. So we're actually in JavaScript grabbing that data switcher attribute, which is on these. So on these tabs. And we're just going to grab them. Now, you can actually add elements around the page as well, which has data switcher, and you can select those and also change pages. So if you add a link, let's say, inside one of in one side of pages to, let's say, about page, you can then switch using this same similar method. So we're going to loop through all these um, uh, data switches, these tab switches, and I'm just going to say tab it, i is greater than tab switches dot length, I++. plus plus. So now there's a standard for loop. So what we're doing here is we're saying we're getting a variable called I. We're setting its value equal to zero. Uh, all arrays start at zero, just to let you know in programming. Uh, and then we're going to say I is less than tab switches dot length. So the length of this array. So let's say we have 10 tab switches. This is going to be equal to 10. Um, and as long as this is below it, we're going to continue running the code, which is inside this block. And every single time we run it, we're going to increase the iteration number. So I hope that makes sense. We're now going to create a tab 
switcher, not switchers, uh, and then say tab switchers. I. Right, so what we're doing is we're getting the current iteration of the tab switchers and adding it to this variable. So now we have the singular uh, node element and not the uh, array. And then we need to get the page ID of this tab switcher. So we're going to say data set dot tab. Now what's happening here is you see we've got a constant page ID and we're getting our tab. So we've got our tab here. We're getting the data set. Now what this does is it passes back all of the, it passes back an object with the um, data attributes. Anything with data hyphen, it passes back in this array. And then if we get, if we then pass through here dot and then whatever the name is after the height data high hyphen, it will then return the value what's inside it, which is equal to three for the one we were just highlighting. And there you go. So that's going to get us whichever one we click on, we're going to be able to use this page ID. So we're going to say tab switcher dot add event listener. And we'll say click. And then we're going to say function. And we're using that. Oh, we're not going to say function. We're going to use an arrow function. Uh, again. And then we're just going to say document dot query selector. And we're just going to say tabs dot tab dot is active. So we're going to get the current active one. We're going to get its classes. And we're going to remove is active because we're clicking on a tab we're changing pages which means we need to deactivate the current tab we're on and activate another one so we just need to go here and say tab switcher dot parent node because remember we at the classes are on the li not the actual data switcher we're then going to say class list dot add and then we're going to say is active so what's happened here is we've got the tab switcher we're getting its parent, which will be the li inside the ul list. We're adding the class of is active, and that is going to basically highlight it in our thing. And then we're going to call a function, but for now we're just going to say console.log, and we're just going to say page id. Save, and let's go back. Let's bring up our console on the left here. Don't worry about it looking weird over here. Um, and then let's refresh and just click about so you can see we get the tape and it actually swaps the tab so wherever we click you can see it's changing it's giving us the id so now we can use this id to swap the page so let's create a function so in here we're just going to say function uh switch page and then we're going to pass through the page id which we want to switch to oh that's not what we want to do oh and we don't want to call function so we actually do that outside of here so we can even do this outside of the on load so we're going to say function switch page and it's going to have a page id of course and then we're going to get constant current page so we need to deactivate the current page first again we need to say dot pages dot page dot is active and then we can say current page dot class list dot remove is active finally we can say const next page is equal to document so this is the page we're going to be switching to. And we're going to say query selector. And now we're not going to use these uh, little... We're not going to use normal ones. We're going to use these side ticks. Can you see the difference? So they're straight ticks. And these are back ticks. So we'll use back ticks. It's normally located in the bottom left side of your keyboard. If it's not, you're going to have to search for it because I don't know where it is. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to add variables inside our string. So we're going to get page. We're then going to get the data page. And we're going to set it equal to, we're going to pass through a dollar sign and then two brackets like this. And this now allows us to write JavaScript or variables inside of here, which is going to obviously give us the right one, uh, page ID, which our page ID will pass it through. And that's the page we want. So that's the next page. We then want to say next page dot class list dot add. And we're going to add is active so that is it for this now let me just explain this because some people get confused this i've had a lot of people say what is this why i don't get it so we'll get we're looking we're doing a query selector which looks for um queries we we search the page to find stuff um, and what we're doing is we're looking at this data page so remember up here we did data switcher now we can actually pass through we can say if it's equal to something as i said earlier and what we're doing down here is we're saying if the data page is equal to the page id we're passing through then that's the one we're going to select. And then we're going to say next page, class list is active. So let's go back. Let's refresh. And as you can see, if we click about surfaces, and we've got an error. <laughs> uh, cannot read prop, uh, class list of null. 
So let's go back to our page and see what we've done wrong. So we've got data page, that's on there correct. Uh, data tab is on there correct. It's sunk in the JavaScript. You guys have probably already noticed it. So we're going to dot pages. We're going to dot page. We're going to get the data page and we'll pass in through the page ID, which is going to have this, which looks fine. Let's do that. Let's actually console log our page ID up here. Console.log page ID. So we're just going to do a bit of debugging. Sometimes you have to do this. Refresh and let's click about. We get two, which should have got us page two, but it didn't. So it's saying the class list. So if we click here, it's going to show us where it is. So it's right here. It's not finding something to remove from. So that's fine. We haven't got, I assume our issue is we're missing something. So we're removing is active off this page but this isn't returning anything so document.querySelector.pages see we did page it needs to be pages and that was our issue now you should run a if statement you should say if current page is not equal to like null or something like that because that's obviously catching the error and then we could have told said that it just don't don't error so now if we click about you can see it swaps to page two if we click services page three and finally, page four. Now, that is it for this tutorial, guys. It's a very basic one. It's a beginner-friendly tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the sort of more beginner level. In the next video, we're going to be doing something maybe in uh, Vue.js with the similar approach with data uh, pages. We'll probably have to use the router or something like that. And we'll just create some really cool dynamic tabs and just some fun things along the way. Or maybe we'll do some JavaScript. Let me know what you want me to do down in the comments below. If you liked this tutorial, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Ring the notification bell. And I will see you in the next video, guys. So thank you for watching and peace out.